Faith, and welcome to Channel 16 News. Today we will be talking about what's happening on the Indian subcontinent. Johnny, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Woo! Let's talk about them sports! Thanks, Phil! <laughs> okay, let's hear the highlights and the lowlights of this game. We have successfully become an independent country and broken away from the British East Indian Company. Let's go, India! We Woo! got this! <laughs> also, the Industrial Revolution has helped us create great fabrics such as muslin. It's so soft. And it created a variety of cultures, religions, languages, and people. Great job, guys! Sadly, in many of the countries here, the government is corrupt and unable to protect the citizens. Most of the politicians broke the rules to get where they are today. Poverty and hunger is a huge problem here, and the garbage industry is super sketchy. Wonder what the government is doing to fix all this. Have any input on that? Thanks, Johnny. Most countries on the subcontinent have very similar governments and have been able to do a lot of good, but also make things worse. These governments include a prime minister at the top and three branches of government that follow. In Bangladesh, the government has been able to help solve many problems. One prime minister has helped to control very serious poverty and hunger problems by distributing food to those who really need it and giving jobs to those who are poor. In other news, it has had many problems with workers' rights and riots. When people gather up and protest, the government tries to warn them, but then uses brutal force. That's rough. I know, right? In some cases, protesters have been killed. For the workers, hours are long and horrendous. The conditions of factories are also horrible. There are so many work-related accidents that people just expect them now. This has something to do with the industrialization, right? Yep. And here's Joe to talk about. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm here live in India where thousands of people are facing famine and poverty. Although industrialization seemed to be a phenomenon for the people of, in of the Indian subcontinent, it has now caused the economy to crash. At first, textile mills were booming with profit and unmatched trade. However, the, the invention of a steam power has resulted in our markets crashing and created an international competition for production. In addition to that, starvation is increasing. This is because factories and other modern structures have taken over too much of India's land, leaving no room for farms or land food sources. Barbie, what do you have to say about all of this? Thanks, Joe. Barbie here. It's time to travel back in time to 1526, when the Mughals came all the way from Afghan and invaded making our wonderful India under their control. Most of India then had to follow the Muslim religion. It was a time when India lost its own independence and many changed their religion, but that wasn't too bad. It was worse when India was invaded by Britain. The Mughals left our coastal borders unguarded. It was so easy for the British to come in. So much so that by 1707, the Mughal Empire almost completely declined and the British had easy access to Indian territories. It was a very difficult time. We had to switch locations because some people don't have respect for their elders these days. Anyways, then in 1757, the British East India Company had their first victory in battle in Battle of Plassey. It was terrible. Lots of people died. The British East India Company was founded in 1600 and continued to grow in power. So much so that they took over Bangladesh and other small territories. This began the era of imperialism, but imperialism wasn't all that bad. It had its good sides too. The trade in India was increased and people received more education. That's good, right? On the flip side, imperialism took advantage of the Indian people. The British took most of the profit. They were also strong with military power and had access to Bangladesh and to what you know today to be as Pakistan. The British profited from natural spices, wealth control, and more. India lost its identity and its culture. Day it is. All right, March 21st, 1930. It's a lovely day outside. A little cloudy, but that's okay. Better do some homework. Ugh, I'm kind of hungry. Ugh, there's no salt in this. 
Hey, do you have any salt? No, sorry. Salt is too expensive because of taxes. Oh, dang it. Okay, thanks though. I can't believe the British are taxing us so much for salt. It's like a necessity of life. Hey, do you have any salt? No, I, I don't have enough money. I can't even afford it. Man, all I want is some salt. Hey, do you have any salt? I do, yes. Here you go. Really? Yeah. Salt? Wow! I just got back from um, the salt march, bro. The salt march? Yeah. What is that? It was a peaceful protest led by Gandhi. Really? Yeah, we wow. made illegal salt. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because you know, it's really expensive. Wow. Did it make a huge effect on the nation? Unfortunately, it did not. Oh. Well, at least you got my salt. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Support the salt march movement and buy your salt today. Very illegal. Hello, and welcome to the best part of the Channel 16 news station. Interviews with Joan Calamezzo. Today, we have a special guest, a soldier who served in the British Indian Army during the Great War. He has received the Victoria Cross. Here is Kudadad Khan. Thank you. Well, you see, back in 1914, I believe it was October 31st, in Holbeck, Belgium, the British officer in charge of detachment was wounded by gunshot, and the other gun was put out of action by a shell. I, myself, was also wounded, but I remained working on my gun until all five of the other men died. Thank you so much, Mr. Collins, for being here with us today. Well, thank you for having me. next week on the episode. Next week's episode will be featuring resources, people, land, and other great things that we have cheerfully taken from India due to industrialization, imperialism, and the Great War. India has great plants, trees, and landscapes for great pictures. Also, you'll lose a lot of weight from the lack of food. You have any food to spare? Please? Not to spare. A variety of cultures, religions, and people to see and visit, but try to breathe too much because there's pollution everywhere. <laughs> As you can see, India has amazing things to do and see and eat. So, watch next week's episode and we'll go more into depth about the wonderful things you can do in India and also places you should avoid. See you next week! <laughs> India is our country that was imperialized by the British. But now since Muhammad Gandhi peacefully protested and fought hard, we have our own independence. Thank you very much, Gandhi. We all really appreciate you. Now it's true that the British did colonize us because they wanted our spices, jewels, and textiles that we are very famous for. Also, since we have a large population and soldier soldiering is honorable, the British army grew quite large. But the downside of this is very high employment, unemployment in the textile industry because we can't compete with British crops, unfortunately. I personally am glad that the British are gone because some things are very tough when they ruled over us. For example, things such as taxation, over taxation on textiles, and our poverty, poverty levels grew while they were here because they divided the land unfairly to suit their needs, and that was not very kind of them. But However, there were some good that came out of this colonization. For example, the British influence was very good because women were treated very unfairly. But now, thanks for the Charta Act, it prohibits girls under the age of 14 from being married. And educating women is also very, very beneficial. The British also tried to abolish the untouchable past and improve social injustices. Again, I am very glad that the British are gone, but there has been good from their being here. Today, India is an influential nation that has a growing economy, maybe because of the British influence.
months. But who knows? Thank you so much for watching. We would like to take a minute to thank our sponsors. Salt March. Buy your salt today. And Tourism with Elizabeth. Great place to go and see. We'd also like to thank you, our viewers, for keeping us on the air. Join us tomorrow for next episode of Channel 16 News. Thanks for watching.